It's one of the most successful handguns ever made. Chances are, whether you know it or not, you've seen this gun on the silver screen. Of course, we're talking about the Colt Official Police. To tell the story of this revolver, we must go back all the way to 1908, when the Official Police was called the Army Special. You see, Colt's manufacturing had designed a reliable revolver for the U.S. military. There was only one problem. Revolvers were an aging technology. And the Will Guns military service was coming to the end of its era. You see, just like the changing of the century, handgun technology was undergoing a transformation. And the U.S. Army favored a newcomer. The now legendary Colt 1911. A self-loading automatic pistol designed by none other than John Moses Browning. The 1911 was far better suited for the ever-changing battlefield. Colt was in need of a market. It would take another 18 years to find it. Fast forward to 1927. The Roaring Twenties were in full swing. City nightlife was lit up with jazz, dancing, and flappers. With the Great War finally over, some found great success, while others found themselves on harder times. Prohibition was the law of the land, and like with all prohibitions, Alcohol bootlegging became big business and caused a boom in organized crime. Police officers were in uncharted territory, taking on gangsters and mobsters like Al Capone, Pretty Boy Floyd, and John Dillinger. At the time, American law enforcement organizations supplied their officers with the underpowered 32 caliber. The police were in need of better firepower. Colt had found their market. They set out on a marketing campaign and gave the Army Special a facelift with the polished blue finish and renamed it the Official Police. With its 38 Special cartridge, it outperformed the 32 caliber predecessor in every aspect. The Colt Official Police was a marketing success. Again, we go forward in time. England, 1940. World War II was in full tilt. The revolver designed for war would finally see action on the battlefields of Western Europe when the British had purchased over 48,000 of the pistols to supplement their troops and security personnel. The U.S. even went on to purchase some of the official police to guard their bases and ports, with the FBI even supplying their agents with the dependable wheel guns. Colt's manufacturing went on to produce the official police until 1969 and even made a few variants including the Border Patrol which are some of the most desirable for the collectors today. In total, Colt's manufacturing produced over 400,000 copies of the official police, making it a very successful handgun. This handgun was present during the 20th century's most defining moments and deserves its spot in American history. Okay, now the history part's done, we're gonna get right into the disassembly. For this disassembly, you're going to need a bench block and a hammer, a small flathead screwdriver, a small pick, a small diameter punch, a pair of needle nose pliers, masking tape, and a pen. A second flathead with a slightly larger head, and of course, you're gonna need your Colt. Okay, the first thing you're gonna remove is the grip. Now this is an aftermarket grip. You're gonna take your small head screwdriver and just unscrew that. Okay, now you're going to remove to the side, move to the side plate your small head screwdriver and you're going to be careful with the turn here. You don't want to just start cranking on this because possibly your gun hasn't been the part in a while. So short burst like that to try to break it free before you start just cranking on it.
set that to side. Now, if you'll take a note, once I removed the screws, I took some masking tape and I labeled each screw front, rear, side plate just to help me keep track of everything. Now, to remove the side plate, you're going to take either a wooden handle or rubber handle screwdriver and you're going to tap it pretty vigorously on the back of the strap. And it'll pop out the side. Okay, now we're moving on to the side plate. The side plate contains the cylinder latch. This part right here. You see that hole that I'm exposing? That hole lines up with the cylinder latch right here and moves it out, allowing it to freely open. Uh, underneath that is a spring and there's a piece of metal in the back of that spring. It could be lost, so be careful with that. Set that to the side. Alright, next we're going to remove the mainspring. And to remove the mainspring, I'm going to use a pair of needle nose pliers and a pick. Now I taped up the front of these pliers so I don't mar up my spring. I'm going to fit it in there. Take the tension off. I'm going to slide that forward. Now my spring can pop out. Just like that. Set that to the side. Next I'm going to remove the paw. To do that, I'm just going to take a screwdriver and lift it out. Now this paw is responsible for every time you pull the trigger, it catches on these things on the back of the cylinder and turns it. Alright, now the next part I'm going to remove is the rebound lever. And to do that, you must first remove the rebound pin. So I've got a setting over a hole in my bench block. I'll take a small punch. I've lost my small punch, so I'm going to improvise. Small punch. I'm just going to tap it out the other side. Now this rebound lever has quite a few functions. It acts as your uh, trigger spring and it also moves your safety bar up and down. So it's got a few functions. All right, to remove that, you're just gonna slide it forward. And you kinda gotta work with it. It is a pain in the neck. But if you slide it forward as far as you can get it and then angle it down, it should come out. So it might be stuck in there pretty good. So just be patient. Don't get in a rush and don't try to force anything. All right, now, once I got that removed, I can move on to the hammer. To remove the hammer, I'm just gonna simply lift and work it out. It'll come right out. And now you'll see that safety unit underneath. Everything's connected. All right, now we're gonna move on to the hammer. The hammer has three parts. You have the point of your hammer here. You have your strut and your stirrup. Your stirrup sits inside your mainspring like this and that's what provides the downforce. Uh, to remove that is just a pin that drives out the other side and that'll just come straight out. Now your strut has a spring, you can see it in there. Draw the pin out and be careful of the spring tension. And this actually has a pin to it too. So if that point ever breaks, you can replace it. You can see the pin on the other side there. You just drive it out and that comes right out. All right, let's move on to the next part. All right, next I'm gonna remove the trigger. And just like I did with the hammer, I'm gonna work it out. Now, pay attention, when that comes out, your safety lever and your safety assembly, it's all gonna come out. And it comes off just like that. Same thing with this side, slide it forward, and it comes all apart. Now note how that was together. And 
Next, I'm going to remove the bolt, uh, the bolt, which is also called a cylinder latch. But first, I'm going to go ahead and remove the latch pin. And over here on this side, you're going to find another screw. I'm going to remove it. Now this is not a normal screw. It's actually hollow on the inside. And it contains a spring. The spring's going to come out. And at the end of the spring, there's going to be a piece of metal that that spring is sitting inside of. And that's what holds your crane in. Your crane is this part right here. It goes inside the cylinder. It simply just slides forward and that's your cylinder assembly. Now I don't have the proper tool to take this uh, cylinder apart so I'm not going to mess it up by trying to. Now we can get to the cylinder bolt. You see a piece of metal sticking up there? If I push down you'll see the bolt assembly move and that actuates every time you pull the trigger that'll actuate when the next round goes into battery. And actually works off of this. Now to remove that, it might be in there pretty good. So remember, like I said, small quick turns. You don't just want to pry on it. Now this is under spring tension, but it shouldn't go flying anywhere. Spring pressure is going the wrong way. Get it out of that channel and around. All right, the spring slides up in a hole in the bottom of this bolt. Right there, the spring just slides up in there. Now we've got this gun almost completely disassembled, with the exception of the barrel and the front sight and the cylinder assembly. Uh, I'm going to list below. A link to uh, Gun Parts Corp. If you need to find any parts, that's a really good place to start. Um, other than that, just take note, label your parts, keep a mental note of everything. It doesn't hurt to take pictures as you're going, as you're uh, as you're taking it apart. It'll help you uh, put it back together correctly. If you got any questions, leave them down in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you guys for watching. Stay safe and keep shooting America.